Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Saban and this is a video tutorial on how to use Pi Rosetta. So Pi Rosetta is a molecular modeling uh, software, very similar to, in fact actually it is a, a Python version of Rosetta. I have done a previous tutorial on how to use the ab initio protocol of Rosetta, but Rosetta uh, is written in C++. And that's how you, uh, because it's written in C++, you have to compile it and so on. Um, and to interact with Rosetta, you will have to write an XML script. But the Gray Lab in John Hopkins University has ported Rosetta into PyRosetta. As you can see, this is their uh, website. And to install it, you will have to obviously go to the Rosetta Commons because it's you know, part of it's, it's, ori it's originally Rosetta in Python. Uh, go to software where you will find the license. You will have to register for a license here for PyRosetta, not for Rosetta, but for PyRosetta. And once you have a license, you can go to the PyRosetta website, uh, download it, and then choose the download you want. Of course, like Rosetta, PyRosetta will work on a Macintosh or a Linux. Um, I think it also works in a Windows, but I'm, I haven't, because I haven't used Windows for a long time, so I can't really tell uh, how easy it is to install it on Windows. So I don't have um, experience with that. But you can click uh, any of these, which correspond to your operating system, and you will be prompted for username and password, which you will get in an email after you get the license. And once you enter your username or password, you will be able to download the latest Rosetta um, software. If you follow the instructions, it will explain to you how to compile it. Remember, it, yes, it is a Python library, but it is actually ported from C++, so you still have to compile it. And uh, if you go to the tutorials, it will explain to you how you can uh, compile the um, program. But this tutorial is not how to compile it. This tutorial is how to start using PyRosetta. Now PyRosetta is, is quite powerful because you are able to use Python. You're able to use Python to perform the calculation and the computation that you want and PyRosetta. What I'm trying to say is you can combine PyRosetta with other libraries, for example, like BioPython or um, uh, NumPy and, and so on. And now you can follow these tutorials here, which are, are very good. It shows you how you can use PyMol, combine PyMol with PyRosetta, uh, how to start with PyRosetta, the, the scoring, the folding, the design, and so on. Um, they're pretty comprehensive, but be careful because they are written, as far as I know, the last time I checked, they are written in Python 2. And obviously now there is Python 3. So what I'm going to show you today Python 2. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is not a replacement to these tutorials, but an introduction to the tutorial. So I hope that after you see this tutorial, the tutorial I'm recording now, um, you, will, you can get a kind of a better understanding of how PyRosetta is structured, how to use PyRosetta. So you, can, you, you might be able to do things quite quickly, but if you also decide to take the tutorials, which I strongly recommend because they're very comprehensive and it explains to you how you can you know, put together your own protocols using movers and so on. Uh, so I hope you find it useful. So let's start. Uh, what I have here is uh, obviously a terminal and there is nothing in this directory. It's the same directory here. Oops, sorry. Um, uh, documents. Yeah. And we will start with a normal text file. I use vim, so let's say test.py. Now, if you compile PyRosetta correctly, you will be able to import, oh, sorry, from PyRosetta, import all, and then from PyRosetta.toolbox, import all and then initialize and once you do that you should get a printout of PyRosetta uh, remember I am on Arc Linux so the Python version I'm using 
is 3.6. If you're on Ubuntu or Debian, I think, I'm not sure, but I think all Debian-based uh, Linux, Linux um, your default Python is Python 2, so you'll have to say Python 3. Uh, just be careful because if you're going to combine, if you're going to compile PyRosetta and Python 3 and try to use it with Python 3, it's not going to work. And obviously the other way around. Now, if your system is old for whatever reason, maybe it's a long time, long term support. Um, there is PyRosetta for Python 2, uh, so you have that option. You're not stuck with Python 3. So let's say Python, and then uh, test. And there you go. You will get a printout of by Rosetta. You can see here the introduction and the copyright and everything. That, that, that shows you that you've compiled Py Rosetta correctly. Uh, as, far, as far as I know, I think Py Rosetta compiles correctly on a GUI, on a graphical user interface, but I think there's an issue when you try to compile it on a server. I'm, I don't understand what's the, the issue, but I, I was able to solve it by compiling it with pip rather than the normal uh, 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 Python setup.py which you will find in the tutorials. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see what PyRosetta can do. So first of all, we need to import a pose. So pose is like, um, it's the way PyRosetta handles a, a structure internally. So we can import a structure into PyRosetta as a variable and in three different ways. So we can import, uh, we say pose equals pose from, um, let's say, le oh, okay, I don't have a file at the moment. So let's, let's import file. So let's from our CSV, all right? And we'll say the name of the file is 1YY8, okay? So what will happen now is when I, when I uh, execute this uh, script is that by Rosetta, will fetch the one YY8 structure, a protein structure uh, from the RCSB database, imports it, but also it's going to clean it. And that's an important part. It's an important step because PyRosetta requires structures in a specific way. It requires a, a, a structure without, for example, uh, water molecules, sulfur molecules, uh, sulfur atoms, uh, iodine atoms, anything other than uh, 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 an amino acid sequence. Uh, so that's what. So that is what is meant when uh, Pyrozeta says "clean," a, a clean uh, protein structure. Now, unfortunately, there are some non-canonical uh, amino acids. For example, um, when wh where most proteins have methiamine, some proteins, especially that the ones that were expressed in a bacteria, have uh, selenomethiamine. And selenomethiamine is a non-canonical amino acid, which means when you import it, or when you try to clean that type of protein using pyrozeta, pyrozeta will just delete it. That's quite an issue because if you open some cleaned files, you might find them segmented. So if you've got a chain of uh, um, amino acids, the non-canonical amino acids will be deleted. So be careful when you are uh, using this method when you're importing from RCSB or when I, I, I'm also going to show you now when you're um, trying to import a, a protein, just make sure that it is not segmented or, or that it's cleaned properly. It's just a polypeptide chain. Let's see this. And what should happen now is that it should download that structure for me and clean it. So I'll end up with one yy8.pdb and then one yy8.clean.pdb. Let's check. There we go. You see one yy8.clean.pdb, one yy8.pdb. And if we check them, let's say pymol one uh, yy8.pdb, you will see that it's, it has water around it. You see the water molecules here. I'm, I, I hope it's clear. I think. Uh, OBS sometimes can remove some colors. You can see it has water molecules. Now, I don't think this structure has any non-canonical amino acids. I think they're all normal amino acids. Yeah. You, you, can, very, you, you can easily tell by PyMol. It will, it will print its uh, three-letter uh, symbol, uh, three-letter name rather than one-letter name. Anyway, uh, and let's look at the clean structure, you'll see that it has no water molecules, as you can see. 
right? So I hope that explains what a clean structure is. It's very important to uh, import clean structures into PyRoset, otherwise it will crash. Right. Uh, so there is another way, obviously, to import a structure. If you already have the structure in your own computer, in your local computer, for example, because you have mutated it or changed it or uh, manipulated it in your own way, which in, another, in other words, it is not found in the RCSB uh, data, uh, database, you can import it locally. So we can do that, clean that pdb because i already i i know we have this uh, this um, uh, structure this pro this file in our local computer i will just say pose from pdb and if we execute it will import oops sorry so i executed the wrong command yeah we just imported and no, again nothing's wait what um Why did that happen? I got an error. I not. Oh, yeah. It gets capital letters, right? Yes, it's capital letters. So why? Oops. Why? Why? And it should work now. Yeah, there we go. All right. Now, again, you're not going to see anything special because it's just importing a file. We haven't done anything to the file. Uh, before I move on, there is a third way of generating a structure in PyRoset. This, this is very useful if you want to design or invent your own or for whatever reason, model your own um, file uh, a structure. You can actually just generate a structure by sequence. Uh, so you just say... Um, from sequence, pose from sequence, and we'll, we'll just say uh, valine, 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 valine. It's just going to be a straight primary structure sequence. And um, yeah. Okay, so let's look at the directory. You can see these. This is our file. Oops, our file. This is the original structure and this is the cleaned structure. All right. And now this is going to be very useful if you want to do some folding, uh, uh, like ab initio folding protocols. But there are three, so there are three ways of generating a pose or importing a structure into Pyrozetta. You have the, uh, uh, from the RCSB, PD, pose from RCSB method. You have the pose from PDB method and you have the pose from sequence method. All right, so let's see, let's go back to this one and let's analyze the pose a little bit. Let's print it sequence. So I can say, since now I have imported the structure into PyRosetta as a variable, I can run things on it. So first of all, let's say print the pose. Let's see what, what, does, what does this give us. And what it should print out is a sequence, the sequence, the, pose, the sequence of the pose, and a little bit of more of additional information. One thing you will realize is in PyRosetta, you get a lot of printout, and there's no way around it. So it's very difficult. If you want to generate your own printout, it will be embedded in the middle. You might get confused, uh, might see it. Yeah. So as you can see, here is the sequence, here's the full tree, a little bit more, more information. If you just want, there's a total of 868 um, uh, residues, amino acids in this structure. If you just want the sequence, sometimes it's very useful if you want to take the sequence, for example, from this pose and, for example, run blast on it or send it up to uh, Cypred or do whatever you want with it, you can just get the uh, pose that you, you can just print the sequence itself uh, sequence uh, or let me show it to you in a better way you can uh, sequence equals uh, pose dot sequence and let's print the sequence now you've got the sequence as a string And obviously, you can manipulate it, you can change it, you can use it, um, because now it's just a string, a, py a Python string. 
There you go. See, it's just a string. Very simple. All right. Um, then we can find the total residues. So let's say maybe I should keep these uh, commands. Uh, so we said uh, sequence equals pose dot sequence right. and then print seek. Then we can say what is the total residue? So how many residues are here? Okay, now we can obviously just you know length of the sequence, but we can also do it in a in a pyrosetta way. Um, and we say um, total equals pose dot uh, total residue. Oops, residue. And then we can print total. And we will get, what was it? 868. Again, we will get an integer. And obviously this helps sometimes when you want, for example, to run a loop uh, on only the number of um, residues on the protein instead of having a while loop or a for loop that goes uh, after and crashes the after the sequence and crashes before the sequence and it doesn't complete it. So it's, you know, it, it helps. But as you can see, now we have an integer so we can manipulate it in a Pythonic way. Um, let's analyze some of the structures. We can say, okay, um, let's pose dot uh, residue. Let's see what is the 500th residue. What's the name? What's the 500th residue? So let's say name. So let's say here, uh, res, residue, pose, residue number 500. What's its name? And res. I think you can get the, the idea. It's quite logical. It's not really something very strange. So this will print us the residue name of the 500th residue. So it's glycine. Excellent. Uh, we can now choose what, what type of, or which residue I choose, at which residue at which position. If I want to know the first residue, the second residue, the 10th residue, what is it? So I can use the name uh, method to print out what it is. We can also find out what chain does the 500th residue belongs to. So let's do that. Let's say um, chain equals pose dot um, pdb info and then dot chain of the 500th residue. Print chain and if I'm not mistaken it should be a usually say but we have four chains if you remember when we saw the structure we have four chains so this is going to be the C chain right excellent I hope you get this, uh, the the, uh, the general idea we can also find the number yeah the um, Remember that PDB structures don't always start at one, but Pyrosetta always starts at, actually I, I do get confused. Does it start at one or at zero? You know, there's always this issue. So let's try to find out the 500th residue that is in the structure. What is the internal name in uh, the internal number in Pyrosetta? Because they're not going to be the same. If, if if the structure starts as residue 5, it's going to start at res residue 0 or 1. I, 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 we'll find out now uh, in, in Pyrosetta, do you understand? So if you want to manipulate something in the uh, structure, it's going to be different if you want to manipulate it in Pyrosetta. Uh, again, because not all protein structures start at 1, starts at 1. So we'll say number equals pose dot pdb pdb info uh, dot number 500 so fi 
the 500th um the 500th residue in the structure what is its number in pyrosetta so it's going to be you can see the printout sometimes it's difficult to find your own printout in the middle of this so it's the 66th 66th uh, residue within pyrosetta so pyrosetta does not see that residue as the 500th residue it sees it as the 66th residue do you understand i hope i hope it's clear um it you have to identify what is going on you have to understand what's going on because if you want to manipulate a protein if you want to analyze or change a part of a protein you have to call the number in the the the, the residue number the residues number in pyrosetta and not the structure there's a difference again because a pyrosetta will always start i always forget if it's zero or one but it's always going to start from uh, zero or one but the structures the pdb structures don't always start at one sometimes they're at 10 sometimes they're at 20. that's because either the protein is turnicated if it's um you know the first part of it is turnicated or the first part of it is so floppy it doesn't crystallize whatever so Let's do the opposite. Let's see a specific, let's see a specific residue number in pyrosetta. What is its corresponding number in the PDB structure? So we'll do the, op we'll do the opposite of this. So we'll say pi number, pyrosetta number, uh, pose um, dot uh, PDB, oops, PDB info, oops, PDB info, and then PDB to pose. And let's see the, uh, the residue in chain C and, okay, because we know, uh, number 66. So we, what we should get is 500 here. Let's check it out. Oh, I didn't. I did not print it. Sorry. Yeah. Print. I. No. All right. There we go. It's clear, right? It's straightforward. It's and nothing complicated so far. All right. Let's let's find what is the secondary structure of this protein. So we can say uh, secondary structure equals to pose. Actually, no, no. I, I don't think we have to have it as a variable. Just pose dot. Um, no, no, no get structure of the pose and i think this will immediately just print it and you will find a, a um, what looks like a faster print it, it, it's a cypred um, cypred uh, print of the protein it should show you each amino acid each amino acid and its um corresponding secondary structure what, what happened here name get structure Hmm. Ah. I, I, I wrote it wrong. It's secondary struct. Secondary structure, yeah. So it should print the entire sequence, each amino acid secondary structure. H, uh, L, or S. Uh, H for helix, uh, helix. You can see. Uh, e for strand and L for loop. Um, I know this may not look pretty here. That's because we should well, ideally run it this way. Um, download. Nope. Mm 
-hmm. There we go. So you can see every single amino acid and what is its secondary structure. E is a strand. L is a loop. And, there are no, and helix. And H is a helix. So obviously this uh, helps you a lot to understand what's going on. What is your structure made of? All right, moving on. Um, let's start by analyzing a little bit more of our pose. So let's say, uh, let, let's see the phi, psi, and omega angles of a residue. So let's say phi equals pose dot phi of the 500th um, amino acid. Print phi. So this should print us the phi angle of the 500th uh, residue. I think is, um, I don't think this is a good idea because this residue is a glycine. So maybe we should. Okay. So anyway, you you can see this is the. Um, oh sorry, no, the chi, the chi, yeah, yeah. Agalasin won't, won't have chi angles. It will have psi, phi, and omega angles. All right. So you can see, this is the angle of the phi. This is the phi angle of the glycine, which is the five hundredth residue in the structure. Uh, I think you can see what is going to come uh, next. So let's say here is uh, phi, and then we're going to we will be able to do the same, of course. Uh, p, p, and let's say this is going to be psi and this is going to be omega oops psi going to be psi and this is going to be omega it's just straightforward psi So this will help you analyze um, the protein's angles. Uh, phi, psi, and, and omega angles, psi, phi especially, are very important angles. And you can, you can, uh, you can access that. Um, it's very straightforward. It's very simple. Each residue, you can, un you can uh, uh, analyze what are the phi, psi, omega. You can also do the chi angles and so on. It's, 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 it's not very um, complicated. It's, it's straightforward. Uh, now here is where PyRosetta starts to shine because other Python libraries, for example, uh, BioPython, you will not allow you to do what I'm about to show you right now. You can also from using other, Py Rosetta, uh, uh, other Python libraries, you can uh, find the length of the protein, you can find the chain, the number of uh, uh, amino acids, the sequence, the secondary structure, you can do a lot with other libraries other than PyRosetta. But what PyRosetta shines is um, your ability to manipulate the protein. So for example, you can mutate the pose. We can say, um, sorry, mutate residue from the pose number 500 make it into a valine. All right, so let us, um, let's print the sequence, um, the sequence of the pose, the ones before and after. Um, 500 might be difficult to find, so let us just, uh, let's try this and maybe we can try the first residue and see if it's, uh, 
it's easy to spot. I, I, I won't be able to create some hydrate residues. All right. It would be difficult to spot where is the 500 residue. So well, what, what we can do is we can say residue name before and after. I can say here, um, resid, oops, I can say, where did it go, oh. residue name, before and after, yeah, so it should change from a glycine and into a valine. I can't see it. Oh, of course I can't see it. I didn't print it. Print res. Then print. Obviously, it's not very good Python coding because it's the same variable, but. I, I, I'm just showing the, the concept. I'm sure when you come to code, you'll do a better job. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We started with a glycine, and then we changed it into a valine. Again, as you, you, you can see the print out here from Pi Rosetta. It's both useful and annoying. It's useful because it shows you what's going on, but it's annoying because you can't shut it off. Um, so once you understand and once you benchmark and once you develop your script, there is no way to shut this up. So you can only print what you want and you know make your uh, script presentable. So it's kind of you know good and bad at the same time. Um, so this is how you can mutate a residue. Now let's look how we can change the angles. Again, there, I haven't come across any other Python library that will allow you to do this in Python. Now, obviously, you can do it in Rosetta um, using the command line and XML scripts, but you can't do it on Python. So let's change. Uh, let's print, for example, the... Where did it go? The phi... This is the phi angle, phi angle of the 500th residue. Then we can say pose uh, dot set underscore phi to let's let's use a oh, of the 500th residue to let's say 180, mm, let's say 90, all right? And let's print this again. Print. Fine. Now let's try to run it and let's try to find out the values in the middle of all this printout. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. See, it started with 115 and then we changed it into a 90. Now you can actually observe this in PyMol. And in fact, if you go to PyRosetta, there is a way where you can uh, set up PyMol to view what is happening inside PyRosetta Live. Um, it's actually not very complicated. You will just have to go. Uh, I can't do it at the moment because there's an update issue between um, PyMol's Python 2 and then uh, Py, uh, PyRosetta's Python 3 and the script that connects them both. Um, there's an update, there's a ver uh, version issue. So I can't do it right now, I have to update my system. But I, I can tell you it's possible and it's very difficult to set that up. I'm not sure which tutorial it was in. I think it's one of the first ones. Um, no, it's not this one, I think it's probably the next one. And it, it's very simple. All you have to do is open PyMole and then run a script. I was just explaining this to you. Um, I can't see it. Maybe it's late. No. Mm. Mm. 
Maybe it's this one. And trust me, it's in one of the tutorials. <laughs> I can't see it. Anyway, uh, it, it, the, it, it was very simple. All you had to do was um, open PyMole and then run a specific script. So you have to say run and then the path to PyRosetta and this script. So I'll just show you. We can say PyMole. And then from PyMole, I, I would say run and then home and Py, PyRosetta and then there is this script here, pymole, pymole, uh, rosetta server.py. And again, it's not working with me because I'm using pymole with Python 3, and that script is written in Python 2. You can check it out. Yeah, it's in Python 2. The easiest way to find out is the print statements. Yeah, it's Python 2. Uh, I, I know that they updated it uh, in the, for, in the, in the um, Rosetta forum they have announced that they've updated it and I think it works now but I haven't updated my system but that's one way where you can actually visualize what you're doing in PyRosetta live on PyMall and you can see actually you know, the I mean as it's turning and if you, if you want to change the position if you want to mutate them you can see it all uh, so this is how you set how you change this is how you change oops this is how you change the value of an angle and obviously from 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 here you can easily tell that you can just say set phi set psi set omega and you can change all these angles now one of the most important parts of uh, rosetta and pi rosetta is the score of the protein Obviously, if you have a protein that has a high score, it means its energy is not very favorable. It, there are clashes or stretches somewhere. Or, and the whole concept of Rosetta is the scoring, fun is the energy function that gives you a score for the protein. So how do you score a protein? It's very easy. Uh, all you have to do is first you have to call the score function. So we'll say uh, score function and get a full atom score function function and then simply we'll just say score function pause uh, before we do that let's uh, okay, let me comment all of these things out Oops, we have to import the pose. Okay, let's look at the score function. What is, what is it made up of? Um, so this is a full atom score function. It's not a centroid for, uh, score function. You can have a, um, an empty score function, but let, let, let's look at this one. So let's print the score function and see um, what are the weights. Oops. Um, So it should print out here all the weights of all the um, uh, the energy function values, uh, energy function bits. So here you can see. Um, go up. There they are. So uh, the. Um, uh, FA attraction is 1, the FA repulsion is 0 0.55, the uh, FA solution is 1, the FA uh, entry repulsion is 0 0.05. These are all the weights, all of them. And as you can see, again, the hydrogen bonds, um, everything. Um, you can see there's a lot because obviously we called a full atom score function. Um, what we can also do if we call an empty score function, we can change the, the values. Let's just comment this out. Oops. So, um, core function equals 
score function and this should give you an empty score function there are no weights and then you can build it up yourself um, th this happens a lot in Pi Rosetta obviously Rosetta as well but also in Pi Rosetta where you take a score function and but you want to push the protein towards a specific uh, direction so you would change the weights of a specific value of the score function that will allow you to push that protein to a specific direction for example to maybe uh, become more compact or try to, f to be folded a specific way or to uh, um, behave in a specific way while, while you're designing it um, here are the weights you can see there are no weights it's just empty score function has no weights. Again, I'm, I, that's part of the difficulty of Pyrozetta is the uh, massive amount of printout that happened that comes out and it's difficult to try to find out what you want inside. Let's delete this. Let's delete this. And let us score. Okay, let me just show you how you can um, change the score of a, um, a, 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 a weight, uh, change the weight of uh, a score, uh, uh, part of the score function. So you can say score oops, score function uh, dot set weight and then now I, the way I write sometimes I write Python is not not a traditional way and it helps be, um, when I try to copy paste scripts in between uh, projects so instead of importing everything at the top I would just import everything and then call specific classes. I know it's not the it's not the proper way of writing Python, but at least it will explain to you what's going on. So I'll say Py Rosetta Rosetta. It's like a it's like a path. Uh, core coring core type, and this is the uh, final one. F A at fraction and then change it to the value of 0 0.5 so if you remember it was 1 the the attraction forces was set as 1 and we're going to change it to 0 0.5 in fact let's change it to something that is noticeable maybe 0 0.05 oh so we have to print again print the core function you may not be able to spot it uh, easily but uh, the first because we're printing it here before and then we're printing it after the first value is going to be one and then the second value is going oh, oh no um i wrote something uh etr yeah yeah i wrote it incorrectly a tr fraction so the this is part of the van der waals forces if i am not mistaken it's um, one part of the Van der Waals forces, the attractive forces. All right, let's check it out. So it got changed to where are the weights? Here are the weights. Oh, no, here are the there, there they are. You can see the attractive force has been changed to 0 0.05. Let's look at the previous one. It was one. So this is one. This is how you can change the va the weight of the score function, um, depending on what type of protocol you want to do. Okay. Now we've seen how we uh, call a score function. How we can change the weights of the score function. Now let's see how we can score a protein. Very simple. Just. Oops. Um, um, core function, yeah, and we'll just um, yeah print core function of the pose.
There we go. And now we have the score of the protein. Obviously, this is an unrelaxed protein, even though it's correctly folded from its crystal structure. Uh, Pi Rosetta sees it as a structure that has very high energy. That's because there are some stretches, some compressions, some little bit of overlap somewhere that Pi Rosetta sees. Obviously, it doesn't exist um, uh, in other algorithms when it got crystallized because the, the algorithm used in, crystal, in, in solving the structure of a crystal has different scoring uh, score function and energy scoring function uh, which is not the same as pi rosetta which is why there's some differences and what i'm going to show you next is how to relax a structure uh, as to change these values just a little bit in order to make it pi rosetta compliant all right um i think w one thing one another thing i can show you is um that you can actually print out in, an, in a different way. Uh, I think in much more, uh, much better way is the score function and its weight. So score uh, function, and I would say show pose. And I think what this will do, uh, it will it will score a protein and show the details of each value. Each uh, oops, uh, each scoring value. You understand what I mean now. So instead of just printing you a score, and remember this score is an integer. Um, okay, I've printed it here, but I can say um, score equals score dot uh, uh, score um, score function that pose, and it will be an integer. And again, because you're in Python, you can use that integer. For example, you can say um, you can run a protocol and say score this protein, and if the score is larger or less than that do that that again you're in python so you have a lot of power of a lot of manipulation uh, you can yeah, again you're in python so you can see here the you know, actually it's much better table you can see the weights obviously if i expand this it will be much better you can see the weight each score each 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 score its weight remember we changed the weight here um, in this line here, and then the score in the protein. I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't remember the difference between the raw score and the weighted score. You can search that for yourself. But in the end, we combine all the scores and we get the total score of the protein. Uh, okay, there we go, the weighted score of the protein. And what I'm going to show you now is how we can, well, Well, actually, we, uh, b before I show you that, I'm going to show you how, how to score just a single amino acid. Then I'm going to show you how to relax a protein. All right. So let's see how we can score. Now, now we've scored an entire protein. Yeah, we've scored an entire protein. Now let's see how we can score a specific um, amino acid. So we can say pose.energies, I before E. And then show uh, energy of five, uh, the 500 residue. And this should give us details of just the 500 residue. Here we go. Again, because it's just one very long line. Let's see if we can copy it. Oh, no, it's, it's going to be difficult. Anyway, let me just run to now another terminal and better visualize it. Document, oops, documents, and then Python test. It's a horizontal table. It will be very difficult to see it when uh, the terminal is wrapping the text. So let's just copy that here. Much better. You can see the uh, type of energy and its score for this particular amino acid. Not for the entire total protein, not for the entire protein, but for this particular uh, amino acid. All right. 
Now, after all of this, all of this talk on uh, uh, scoring and energies, let's see how we can relax the structure. So it's very simple. And I, I think you'll start to figure out now the pattern of how to handle Pi Rosetta. Uh, first of all, we will call the fast relax mover as such. Here is relax and we will have to navigate to the mover just like a, it's a class of a class of a class. So it's like um, pi, pi Rosetta, Rosetta, Rosetta. So Rosetta is inside Pi Rosetta. So from Pi Rosetta, go to Rosetta, go to protocols, go to relax, go to fast relax mover. Now you can, you can actually see this path if you do the Pi docs. Pi doc pi rosetta and you'll find here rosetta so if you navigate that um, dot rosetta you'll see what's inside rosetta and you'll find protocols now let's navigate to protocols protocols inside protocols you're going to find relax these are all the classes inside uh, protocols, you see there's some de novo design, some um, ab initio, these are all protocols, all the flexible backbone, all of this. Let's look at, let's find relax. Is there a relax here? Yeah, there is a relax. So we can go back and say relax. And inside relax, we will find fast relax. Fast. Relax, don't do this. And now we can see all the arguments that the fast relax mover, which is inside relax, inside protocols, inside Rosetta, inside by Rosetta, uh, and all the arguments that it takes. All of this, the description of how to use the mover. So that way you can understand, if you want to do something, you can, you can find out where it is and how to use it. All right. So we called the mover, we haven't uh, passed anything through it. What we'll say, we'll say relax dot uh, set score function. And we'll say score function, which we have called here. Okay, so we are passing the score function into the fast relax mover. Again, if we, if we went to the pi doc, um, uh, uh, document you if you look carefully you will find a method here for the mover called set core function what is it set i can't see it set score set score function and this is how and this is what you need you need to other than itself you need to pass a score function. Remember, if we if you look at this, here it is. Well, scoring and not score type, just scoring and then score function. I hope you understand how um, PyRoset is kind of constructed. You know, it's, it, it's very similar to direct. It's classes within classes. Okay, let's relax a structure. It's very simple. All you have to do is say relax dot apply and you will see this a lot uh, pause you will call a mover okay, you will call a mover and you navigate now, now the proper way to do this is you can you can say from this thing import this thing all right um i like to keep it this way because i can just copy this to another project uh, without having to uh, find out which part of the from import that I have to uh, bring with me. Um, so you will have to call the mover, uh, set it up in a specific way using the argument, uh, using the methods, and then call apply on the pose. So whatever tuck, 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 you set up here, you set up many things, many things, many things, and then just tuck, apply to pose. And what will happen is let us Let's comment all of these things out.
let's leave this. So we'll score the function before, and then print. Uh, let's just copy paste it. Print afterwards. So what you should see. Actually, this is going to be very difficult to find because there is going to be a massive printout from this uh, re the, from the relax protocol. So let's say um, score one equals this, and then before the relax, and then score score two equals this, and then we'll see print score one. Print in the end, uh, score two, and now they are next to each other. Again, because after after we print the pose, after the, we print the the score of the structure, and we apply the relax protocol, the, the you know the, ra the relax mover, there will be a massive printout. In fact, actually, I might have to pause the video here because the relax protocol, especially on a large protein like eight hundred. Something. I mean, it's going to take a quite a while. It's not going to finish in uh, in two or three seconds. It might take up to five, maybe even ten minutes. Let me try to pause here and come back when it is done. Well, that took a long time. It took about oh, more than six hours. I ran it at one thirty, and it's now nine in the evening. You can see the sun has set. Uh, but as you can see, after relaxing the structure, what was minus uh, 461, now is minus almost 3,000, right? Uh, so this is what the uh, relax mover does. If we, ch I, I did not export the file, I should have, but if we saw the structure before and after, you're not going to see much difference. Maybe there is a 0 0.01 RMS dif difference maybe even zero RMSD difference. Uh, but the, the idea of it is that Rosetta will analyze all the bond lengths, all the, um, uh, um, the, the, the entire structure and optimize, just relaxes it a little bit and makes it um, ideal, ideal for Pi Rosetta. Now, the last thing I want to show you before I, um, I go on and uh, explain how we can perform a Rosetta design is what I missed uh, before the uh, relax mover is how to export a structure. So here we have, a, for example, here we have a protocol, we imported a structure, we did some analysis, we changed it a little bit. And then after we've done all of this, we would like to export it. We don't want it to be volatile, you know, once, as in my example, the structure got relaxed and then that's it, it's, it's gone. <laughs> if I want it, I have to repeat the protocol. So what we can do is export, export the changed structure. And uh, that's very simple. It's, um, all we have to do is say, uh, pose.dump.pdb and then we would say, the new name, new.pdb. Okay, I'm not going to apply the relax again. I just want to show you that this is what happens after we dump a PDB. We have a uh, one YY8 clean structure and one Y8 original structure. And I don't know where this came from. Uh, and the test, our, our script. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to show you how to perform um, Rosetta design in a bit, just give me a second. And once we run the script, we will get a new structure, the new.pdb structure. So whatever happens here, whatever, whichever way we modify, whichever way we modify the uh, pose, we will end up exporting it. So Python, a test. It should not run the relax uh, mover because I commented out the apply um, method. Okay, 
taking quite a while. Let's see. I don't really have a very strong system, which is why it might take uh, a while to finish some of these runs. Oh, it is performing relax. No, no, let's cancel this. Uh, I forgot to save. Is this performing relax? I don't want to wait another nine hours. <laughs> um, all right, let's just close this. And start again. Oops. Yeah. Okay, the relax is commented out. I can't type anymore. <laughs> All right, what it should do now, and it's not doing anything. Ah, all right. Is that it will export? No, it's not going to export anything because oh, yeah, it will. It will export a new um, PDB structure called new dot PDB. So again, you import a structure and you manipulate it. You design it. You fold it, unfold it, mutate it, and whatever you do with it, you would like it back. So you would export it and now if we look we should have a new dot pdb there it is all right so let's let's take these concepts now we've seen how we imported a a structure how uh, we uh, did some analysis how we changed most importantly how do we call a mover and how do we set it up then apply it and so on. So I'm going to show you one of the most famous um, protocols in Rosetta, which is Rosetta Design. How you design a structure, uh, how you redesign a structure. Uh, specifically, I'm going to show you a fixed backbone Rosetta Design. So let us let's remove everything here except for this structure, which we're going to redesign. So let's uh, remove one uh, everything and test. And the new, all right, and we'll make a new script called design.py. Okay, so instead of using the, the 1YY8 uh, structure, which is massive, <laughs> more than 800 amino acids, I'm going to use a smaller one. And I just renamed it structure. I just took it up from my, um, from my work. Uh, let's let's look at it. My mall structure dot pdb, and it's around eighty nine nine sorry ninety eight amino acids. It is small small structure. Ninety eight amino acids. It should it should uh, complete quickly. So let's start. Um, All right, first of all, import PyRosetta. Oh, sorry. From, from PyRosetta, import everything. From PyRosetta.toolbox, import everything. Initiate. Then we will say uh, pause equals pause from pdb because we already have the 
structure in our local computer pdb and then uh, we will import the uh, uh, we will call we will call the score function <laughs> core function um, uh, get full atom score function and then we will say we will call the relax mover which is pi rosetta dot rosetta dot protocols dot relax dot fast relax mover and then we will set it up we will um, import the score function score function and then we will relax the pose so what we are going to do first is this is a relaxed structure i show i just showed it to you there's no water molecules there's no um non-amino acid atoms like sulfur or iodine or whatever it's a clean structure so i don't have to clean it. it's already clean that's why i can just import it as it is then we are going to call the score function and the score function will say this is the type of score function we want there are many different types of score functions this is the full atom score function and if you want to make up your own score function you can as i as i showed you earlier you can call an empty score function and then just seat, uh, 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 set the weights here we're not going to do any of that we're not going to reset uh, 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 redefine any uh, energy weights um, we're just going to use it as we're going to use it as it is then we are going to call um, a, 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 a packer task. And the, top, and the packer task is going to identify uh, what are the amino acids that we are going to redesign. Basically, just going to say everything, except if there are, are cysteines that, that form a cysteine bond. So let's say task uh, pack. And there's another mover, so we're going to have something very similar to this. It will be, uh, uh, no, actually, so it comes from the toolbox. So it's going to be standard packer, packer, task. And we will apply it to the pose. Then we will say, um, then we are going to perform. So uh, after the the packer task, the standard packer task mover, analyzes the pose and says, okay, yeah, so all of these positions are going to be mutated, are going to be designed. We're going to perform the design using the pack mover. Pack mover. It's going to be pi rosetta, rosetta, dot protocols, dot minimization, with an American spelling, Minimization packing, packing uh, dot pack rotamer mover, and in it we're going to call the score function and the task pack. This one, and that's it. Then we will say pack mover dot apply to the pose then so what will happen is after we import our structure the structure is not relaxed so we're going to relax it remember we want to uh, relax the structure to be to reach its lowest energy because if it did not reach its lowest energy uh, pyrosita will be kind of confused it will look at the structure and says wait this structure is not ideal yet um, so when I change it, I'm going to go lower or higher. Do you understand? So we're going to relax the structure first to, re to, to, to allow it to, be, to change the structure so it becomes a structure with the lowest possible energy for that particular structure. Then we are going to call the standard packer task, which will analyze the structure, all its positions, all the amino acid positions. It says, yes, all of these will be muta mutated to all these uh, different amino acids. In fact, actually... Let's uh, let's print it. If I'm if I, if I 
if I remember correctly, I can print this and let me print it here on a wide uh, terminal. I see the document and I can design. And if I remember correctly, it should print all positions and for each position, all the possible amino acids that it can. Okay, everyone, I'm sorry, my computer kind of suddenly crashed. Uh, you can see that Pyrozetta sometimes it performs co uh, computations that are heavy on the CPU. And uh, since I have an old compute, an old laptop, it may not always handle it. I usually run these things on servers and uh, high performance computers, not on my local computer. Um, so that's why suddenly you can see uh, a difference. My computer just crashed. Uh, anyway, so I was, I was showing you the Packer, uh, the standard Packer task what it sh what it prints out so um the task pa the, the the standard ta uh, the standard packer task will print out as you can see here the positions of every single amino acid and what it will what it can be mutated to so uh, position 1 can be packed can be designed and it can be designed to or mutated to any of these amino acids, which is sort of like all 20 amino acids. And it's, it's, it's different than the others. And the last one is different than the others because it just says here, this is the N-terminus uh, alanine, the N-terminus cysteine, and so on. Uh, here is the uh, C-terminus alanine, the C-terminus cysteine, and so on. Yeah. But, uh, and the other ones are not going to be on the edges, of, of course. It's just a com computer-specific thing. So don't think there are differences. Uh, 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 well, well, uh, there are some differences, but it's, it's still the same concept. Um, you can see here position two, it, can, it will be packed, it will be designed into any of these amino acids, alanine or cysteine or histidine or leucine or methamine or arginine and so on, all right? And as you can see, I'm going to design the entire structure, therefore it's all true. This is important to understand because you can actually um, change this for whatever reason. You want to design a part of a protein and not another part. So you can go to the, task, uh, the uh, standard Packer task and say, okay, um, maybe, maybe turn everything into false and turn uh, some positions into true and that will redesign all these positions and keep everything constant then we are going to after we've identified all the amino acids that we are going to design we are going to pref uh, use the pack rot rotamers mover so when we import the structure we import this is a clean structure uh, it hasn't um, it, 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 it hasn't been modified by by Pyrozetta, but it it was clean. So there aren't any water molecules. There aren't any um, sulfur atoms, iodine atoms, any heme groups. Nothing. It's just a polypeptide chain made of just the canonical amino acids. But because it's derived by crystallography it has to be relaxed, right? Um, and I explained to you before what the relax mover does. It relaxes the protein in order to take that structure and reduces it towards, uh, until it reaches its minimum energy. Because if it doesn't reach, if, 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 if Pyrozetta sees a structure that is not minimized, it, which means it can be, it can have lower energy and it starts designing it, it gets confused because the structure has lower energy that it's, it, it hasn't reached yet. So when it changes, it becomes, you know, should I go down, should I go up, which, which structure should I choose? It gets confused. So it's always best to relax the structure and then move forward from there. So we relax the structure. We call the uh, standard Packer, Packer task on the pose. So it analyzes the that analyzes the pose and sees uh, all the positions that are going to be mutated. If I, in this structure, there are, there are no cysteines. If there are a cysteines, specifically two cysteines that are forming a, a disulfide bridge, it will not design them. So you don't have to do that yourself. The standard Packer uh, task will do that for you. 
So if you print this out and you, you see so suddenly two positions that are not being designed, you probably realize that if you, if you investigate, you realize that they are cysteines uh, and they're close to each other, they're, they're forming a bridge. Then we take this information and we pass it to, uh, to the pack rotomers mover. And the pack rotomers mover, it's rotomers mover, which means it will only um, perform computation on the rotomers or the side chain, the angles of the side chain, the, the chi, the chi uh, angles. This is going to perform fixed backbone Rosetta design, which means it will not touch the uh, phi and psi backbone torsion angles, which means you will end up with the exact same structure. But what it will do, it will, it will change the, um, the side chains and will try to pack them up. You know, that's why it will only perform computation on the side chains and not the backbone. You will end up with the same backbone. And this is what we're going to do. After we apply this, uh, we will compare the original structure with the output structure. And you, you will see it has more or less exactly the same structure, ex exactly the same configuration, but it will have a different sequence. So we, we import the structure, we relax it. We call the standard packer task to identify which positions we are going to design. Then we design it, design these positions using the pack rotomers mover, and we apply it here. And then I suggest that we relax again, yeah, just to be, it, it actually makes a difference. After the uh, pack rotomers mover, if you relax, you will, you will get lower energy. Uh, so it is actually useful. Uh, we don't have to call this again. We don't have to write these two lines again because they've already written they're constant so we just say relax dot apply to pose and obviously the pose has been updated it's changed from here to here because we've designed it so we, we don't have to do anything else it, it will, we'll just say relax the new pose and after all of this we want to export our structure because if we run this without exporting it it will just remain in memory and when the script uh, completes it, it's volatile, it will just disappear. In order to export it and save it, save all our uh, efforts and the computation time that we waited for, uh, we will say pose.dump pdb and we will call it uh, designed, designed pdb. That's it, that's all there is to it. And this is a very simplified script that performs Rosetta design on the entire protein, entire protein structure. So let's run it. Now, I, wait, let me see what's inside. Yeah, there's only two, there's on the structure that we're going to design and the script. Now I, I estimate that this is probably going to take three hours, maybe an hour to relax, maybe an hour to design, maybe an hour to relax again, um, maybe a little, less time. I don't think it's going to take more than three hours, maybe a bit less because it's a small protein. It's only 98 amino acids compared to the, <laughs> what, what I think it was like seven and a half hours, seven and a half, no, yeah, six and a half hours waiting for one protein to be relaxed. So let's perform this. Let's wait until this computation completes and I will come back and I will show you. I will show you the original structure and the design structure. They will have the same topology, they will have the same backbone topology, but a different protein sequence. That actually uh, finished f much faster than I thought, <laughs> uh, which is good. So you can see we have a structure, that PDB, the original structure, and a designed uh, PDB, uh, the structure after it has been Rosetta designed. So let's, let's open them and compare them. And designed PDB. Let align and all this. Enter the sequence. Okay, so you can see it's more or less, um, they're more or less uh, the same, uh, they're 0 0.6 RMSD, okay, a tiny little bit of a difference. 
but most importantly you can see that there is differences in the sequence I actually have a script that measures the percentage of differences I don't have time to write it now I do have it in my github you can see there are a lot of differences so these look more most of these look at the surface means most of them are on the surface obviously because you are using or hopefully after you watch this tutorial you start using <laughs> uh, Py Rosetta you have the freedom of doing things in Python which means if you don't like what th what's happening here you can change it you can forcefully design the core you can forcefully design this particular helix uh, again because you're using Python you can use different libraries that combine uh, their methodologies with PyRosetta until you get a complicated uh, but hopefully useful protocol so this is I know this is a very long tutorial <laughs> I usually ramble on but I hope this is a, a good introduction I, I hope you find it useful and uh, it helps you understand what is PyRosetta what PyRosetta can do obviously what I've covered is like 1% of what PyRosetta can do there are much more complicated things you can you, you can stack movers together you can uh, set up different movers move maps and and, and and task managers and so on and then funnel them all into a Monte Carlo uh, mover which will perform several movers together using the Monte Carlo method it's very complicated uh, and it's very powerful if you understand how to use it it's very useful so I hope you can understand what is PyRosetta where you can use it how you can use it and hopefully you can use it in your research if you can find use for it uh, or for or if your research requires uh, some types of protein design or, uh, or uh, um, analysis you have to run on a protein uh, PyRosetta is the best uh, at least uh, that's what I know from my experience. So I hope you find this useful. Thank you for watching.